Welcome to Pat's Picks. This is the 24K Challenge. Thank you so much for coming by. Today is episode five, and I'm going to cover the last couple days of trading, and I am very happy to say they were some big ones. So Thursday, the first was 11,296, and Friday was the biggest of the challenge so far, plus $18,026. And on the first, I forgot to mention, three trades, two green, one red, zero break even. And Friday, I had five trades, four green, one red, and zero break even. So very happy with the challenge so far and excited to go over these trades with you guys. I'm going to keep it very quick. I actually just filmed this and it was like 20 minutes long. And man, and I have got to cut it back a lot. It's going to take me too long to edit that. So I'm going to breeze through this, going to cover a couple of trades. Um, but keep in mind, you know, I'm going to go over things really quick. So if I miss something, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm more than happy to help. So without further ado, I'm going to dive right in. But first, please smash that like button as hard as you can. And please subscribe if you're new here. I greatly appreciate it. All right, here we go. We are looking at the 15 minute chart on SPY. And as you can see, the last couple days, I've been a couple rippers. The market making all time highs. And when the market's making all time highs, it's, you know, it feels like at any point it's just going to turn around and come back down. But at this point, it kind of feels like it's got to hit 500 first. You know, it kind of feels like there's a big magnet at 500 and the market just, you know, it's too tempting not to just keep on going four more dollars and hit five. So we'll see if that happens. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a slight pullback, you know, around the 480 or 485 or so before we hit 500. But, you know, that is just my theory so far. That could completely change tomorrow. There could be news. Who knows what's going on, if there's any more freaking bombings or anything like that. It's just chaos out there. So uh, I don't want to get into that too much. But let's zoom on in here to February 1st. And we can take a look at one of these trades from that day of $11,296. Nice green day. And let's scroll on down here. And I've noticed my fill times have not been in chronological order for some reason. So it has been tripping me up. So you can see right here. I started the day off with a hedge. I bought the 480 puts and the 489 calls. The puts for $25 that actually ended up triggering at 24 so that's nice. Keep in mind when you're trading, if you use a limit order once in a while, you might get lucky and it might get filled below. Um, if you're using a market order, you know there's no guarantee what price you're going to get. So I'm always using limit orders. Um, I've had many bad experiences and bad fills with market orders, so just be careful. You know, I think I've gotten lucky once or twice with a market order where it actually filled me lower than what I saw, and uh, that was basically a fluke, so never count on that. Um, but as you can see here, took this hedge right out the gate, and this one, I am glad I took the hedge because really the winner ended up being the hedge, even though it was about, you know, a third of the size, well, you know, a little bit less than half the size. As you can see, I ended up selling 500 of that put right here for $32 from 11 to 32. So nice $15,000 or so. You know, unfortunately, I did have huge losses on the other end of it, um, but they, you know, more than covered those. So it was a nice green trade right at that point. And then I sold the other 500 shortly after for 39 and 37. So very happy with that. And then I ended up selling 500 of that put and kind of used the rest of that put as another hedge as I ended up taking another call. And I know this sounds a little bit maybe complicating. Hopefully you're following along. If not, like I said, please drop a comment down below. More than happy to help. So that is how that played out. And that's one of those situations where you're very grateful you take a hedge when you do because the market really just starts ripping in the other direction. And it's better to be safe than sorry. And so let's go on to Friday and wrap this video up before it turns into another 20 minute long video because we can't be having that. So moving on to Friday. Friday was a real big winning day. Very happy with that. Uh, first trade of the day, I just kind of locked in some small gains. You know, it's nice to get a win under your belt early. And that way it kind of also builds you a little bit of a buffer so you can be more aggressive later on in the day, which is exactly how it played out for me. So as you can see, as I'm scrolling, you know, I locked in a couple thousand dollars profit on that first trade. And then trades two and three, I ended up taking a hedge just a minute apart from each other. Like I was saying, better safe than sorry sometimes. And sometimes, you know, the market looks like it wants to pull back. It looks like it wants to keep ripping. 
you can't predict everything. And uh, if the volume's there, you know, taking a hedge trade is really a good strategy you can have. If the volume's low and it's chopping in a small price range, stay away from hedges with, with all you've got. Because there's nothing worse than having, you know, both sides of those trades go red and then you lose everything. So just be careful when you're hedge trading. That's my advice on that. Um, but as you can see, I got in at 1035 and 1036. And that was, whoa, that was a little bit earlier on in the day, right around here. So I ended up taking this position right around here and cut losses on that hedge pretty quick once I had confirmation of this breakout coming. So, you know, I'm glad I cut losses when I did. So I ended up cutting losses for a 30% loss, minus 3,000. But then on the plus side, this thing ran from $25 and then I sold my first position at $35. So locked in five grand profit right there. And then I ended up getting stopped out around 40 Five dollars later so locked in another 10 grand profit right there and at that point as you can see right here it was a stop order so the position actually hit 50 or so and that's just the highest I was able to adjust it and you know I was adjusting it all the way up from I think 20 25 30 you know every five dollars or so just moving it on up so I can maximize my profits because uh, it sucks when you see something rip really far to the upside and then just come back down and it's like, oh man, I, I was so close to having a nice big green trade instead of, you know, a nice small green trade. So either way, be grateful for green. But that's about all I have for the day. As you can see, I'll just keep scrolling through here so you can see everything. And that is it. You know, I'm completely transparent. Always have been, always will be. Let's take a look at the account. And boom, there it is, up 66914 from the start. You know, the account just hit 90000 from 24. So very happy with the way things are going so far. Uh, 10 days into this challenge, cannot complain. And if you're new here and you want to join the challenge, it's never too late. You know, start at whatever point you want. This is a paper account. You know, I could reset right now if I want. Definitely not going to. The goal is a million. Um, but you could start at 24, 50. You could start at 100,000. Whatever you want to do. The point is to practice and build up those skills and uh, learn to trade with as little emotion as possible because that's truly um, one of the hardest parts of trading is those battles you have in your mind. Do I buy? Do I sell? You know, and so many things can run through your head um, that can interfere with having, you know, a clear thought process. So building those skills and and building up those those muscles and trading is very important and this is a great way to do it so um, from this you can trade these exact same contracts in a twenty four dollar challenge and you know you can grow it from that point that's why i'm trading these smaller contracts in case anyone is watching you know of course i could trade higher contracts that are in the money that are less risky and you know they could run really far but the point of this is to trade these same contracts that i would trade um, in a small account and just scale it so that's all I have for the day. I hope you guys had a great weekend, and I hope you stay happy and healthy. I'll see you in a couple days.